Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this Ag Forecast for South America brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. I want to go back to uh, looking at our standard precipitation index to see how the last month has shaped up in terms of precipitation. You know, one of the mainstays of our discussion as of late has been the drier conditions we have seen in parts of southern Brazil. So from Sao Paulo through uh, Paraná in here into Santa Catarina and down toward Rio Grande do Sul. So this is where we've really seen um, more often than not higher pressure kind of taking over, giving us more scattered precipitation events. Now what's been interesting about that is I'm going to take you to another website we've used quite a bit lately and show you that over the last 60 days, the northern growing areas versus the southern growing areas have seen a much different precipitation pattern. So for example, in Mato Grosso, we've actually seen pretty regular precipitation throughout November, such that we've gone from some deficit now into a surplus of total precipitation across the state of Mato Grosso. Uh, going a little east of there into uh, Minas Gerais, we can still see the above normal, and even over toward Goiás, we still have above normal precipitation. But as we stated, it's southern Brazil. So we just did this little trip right in through here, okay? If we go down into southern Brazil, that's where we start to see the problems. So to Paraná, we were quite wet early. Look at this in October. And then since kind of flatlined on the precipitation, but just very few events uh, throughout the month of November. And we're starting to see drought develop there. Uh, going down to Rio Grande do Sul, there we're well below our climatological average at this point with kind of a statewide deficit around five inches in precipitation. So these are the areas that we're continuing to see stress in. I'd also like to do the same kind of analysis, but let's go down to Argentina now. So over the last month, the best rains have been in the interior, which means uh, if you're to the east of the Paraná River, which runs right through there, we've been drier. So Uruguay, Buenos Aires, those have been places that have been drier, drier excuse me. But over toward Cordoba, toward Santa Fe, that's been an area that's had better precip. We can look at the same thing here. Let's flip to Argentina and look in Buenos Aires. That is where we're still seeing below average precipitation, kind of a province-wide deficit of 2.36 inches. But as we stated, Cordoba, much closer to normal. Santa Fe, a little bit below average, but still much closer to normal. And so we're just checking in on these regions to see that once you get on the other side of that Paraná River, that's where the deficits seem to be in place. Now what's controlling a lot of this? Well, let's look back here at the flow of the atmosphere. This is the vertical and zonal integral of total atmospheric angular momentum. Basically, this is just the net flow out of the west in the jet stream. We're looking at it compared to normal. Now, what you see is right here, throughout the end of Octo October, excuse me, through November, we've had very strong zonal winds circling the Antarctic. We call that, as we talked about last time, part of our the positive phase of the Antarctic Oscillation or the Southern Annular Mode. And it's been positive, and it's going to stay there. All right, that's the first component to this. We've also watched the ocean temperatures right up along South America's west coast all the way out to Nina Region 3, but Nina Region 1 plus 2, those areas have con continued to cool. And they're probably going to do so through at least the month of December. I don't think it's going to last much beyond that. And that historically is correlated with a drier pattern south and a wetter pattern to the north. And we've taken a look at that a lot lately. But what's governing this upcoming pattern, I think, has a lot to do with the MJO. And what it's going to be doing is shifting away from sitting right here to moving out a bit into the Pacific Ocean. And I want to show you what that's going to do. This is a map that shows you velocity potential. Whenever you see these colors, that represents strong upward motion. So the true position of the MJO is here right now, and it's going to be here for much of the next 10 days, just sliding here. But there's often a reflection of this, kind of on the other side. And so if you go from 120 east to 60 west, we see a lot of rising motion over the Amazon. Now an immediate consequence in this vicinity, having very strong rising motion through the first week of December, is to put sinking motion all along its periphery. That's what we tend to get. And sinking motion in the atmosphere tends to produce, as you know, subsidence, leads to drying, leads to the building of high pressure, and of course, a drier forecast. Take a look. Next 10 days, let's shrink that up so you can see it. There you go. Much above average precipitation here and here, but dry in the interior from Mato Grosso do Sul over towards Sao Paulo through Paraná down to Rio Grande do Sul and along the Paraná River which runs right in through here. It's also drier in Buenos Aires. So these are areas we've seen dry that are now forecast to continue to be drier. You can see it if I just walk you through the European run here. 
You'll notice no major fronts swiping through the area to increase chances of precip. It's scattered at best through Thursday of this week, getting into Friday. There might be some better storms on Friday afternoon. That's pretty far to the south here. I mean, Cordoba's in this area. We're pretty far to the south here, but could get into the western side of uh, uh, the uh, Buenos Aires province. But notice how it doesn't hang together. This just doesn't bring widespread rain through the Parana River Valley and through here. It pushes it up against the mountains. And therefore, going forward, there's just a big donut hole in the middle here that just misses out on a lot of it. Maybe it's easier just to add it all up, ready? This is going through the end of this week. Let's just stop it on Friday night. Ah, how about Saturday morning? This whole area through here is not expected to see precipitation during that time period. That's a big chunk of southern Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. All right. Does it fill in? It tries to, but this is not bringing much precipitation. In fact, I'm just going to take the model out to day 10. There are several places in here that aren't expecting any rain at all through the next 10 days. Are the temperatures going to be hot? Not really. The models aren't bringing in excessive heat compared to average, uh, but the dryness is what I'm mostly concerned about because it extends into week two according to the latest European model, which we would make, which would make sense given that persistence might be the best forecast here. And the models are even carrying this out for the longer time period. This gets us out to December 13. What about going from, you know, let's just do this, uh, the month of December into early January. We see that, I'm playing this kind of fast here, but let's get out there, I don't know, December 10 to January 10. Still see drier conditions in southern Brazil and showing up in Argentina. And we've had that conversation now for several videos in a row. So I need everyone to be watching this carefully to see this drought um, take shape. Should it take shape according to the models here? I have a feeling a lot of folks are in a wait and see mode, waiting to see if it does get dry along the Paraná River. Does it continue to stay dry in southern Brazil? That's going to be the number one question we're going to have for South America moving through the new year. So I'll keep you updated, all right? Have a good week, and we'll talk to you on Thursday. Thanks.